My name is Elina Kurtovic, and I am a project manager of this Podium Identification Project. This project uh, has been formed by ICMP, International Commission on Missing Persons, mm -hmm. and it started with its work in year 99. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the, this project is related only to Srebrenica. So what we do here is an examination and the identification of the uh, victims that uh, are, have been missing since fall of Srebrenica on 11 of July 1995. Mm -hmm. When they formed this project, as I said, we needed a special project for Srebrenica mm -hmm. because Srebrenica has more than 8,000 missing persons, concerning that there are more than 20,000 in the whole country, that mm -hmm. is one third of the missing. So that's why we really needed a special project mm -hmm. like this, which ICMP have uh, had formed in year 99. But they started with collecting up the bodies that were left on the surface in the forests because thousands of people tried to escape from Srebrenica mm -hmm. through the forests. Uh, thousands of them stayed and were captured in an um, aluminium factory in Fatochari mm -hmm. where men were divided from uh, women and children and <coughs> the women and children were sent with the buses and the men were captured in Fatochari. Mm -hmm. We have a room for washing bodies since that all these remains are coming usually skeletonized mm -hmm. but with a lot of mud. So we need to wash the remains so that we can have clean uh, skeletal remains to find any marks mm -hmm. that if, if it's possible that will give us the identity of the person. And uh, of course we have an autopsy room, we will go inside as well where we have our anthropologists and osteologists working and examining the remains, taking DNA samples. At the moment, around 1,680, as far as I know, body bags. Mm -hmm. Those are not 1,600 persons. Those are body bags, which are in a different phases of the process of identification. All these bodies are coming uh, from various uh, locations, different locations, uh, primary, secondary, even tertiary grave sites. Gravesites are the gravesites when the perpetrators captured all these people, killed them, put them in the primary grave sites. Mm -hmm. Two months after, when Madeleine Albright said, We do have satellite pictures, we know that something can been happened here because we know that there are about 10,000 male that are missing from Srebrenica. Then they wanted to hide their crime, so they started to relocate the primary grave sites. They would open a grave site with a very heavy machinery as bulldozers, trucks. They would take out a pile of bodies, put them in a truck, drive them away, put them in another location, uh, sometimes 30 kilometers along away from each other. Of course, they were not taken body by body. The bodies mm -hmm. were uh, in the grave site for two months already. When they opened the, grave, the primary grave site, the bodies came into contact with fresh air. The decomposition process started to go so fast. So what they did with this removing and relocating the bodies, they actually just scattered them around. So today we're dealing with uh, uh, not complete bodies, with body parts, with a lot of commingled remains, different remains commingled into mm -hmm. one case. That's why we say a case. When the body arrives here, our anthropologists, together with the pathologists, do the primary examination. The pathologist's job is to determine if it's possible the cause of death. Mm -hmm. So if there is a bullet or if, if, there, if there is any damage on the bones that uh, he can say for sure that this was mm -hmm. post-mortem uh, injury or anti-mortem injury or if it's possible to determine the cause of that, he would do that. If it's not, because sometimes the bullet can go through a muscle, and, uh, or soft tissue and cause death, mm -hmm. but you don't have any evidences, then he will say that that is uncertain that uh, 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 cause of death. Uh, and the anthropologists are taking the DNA samples and examining the body. 
uh, taking all of those informations from the remains that they can. First of all, they take his height stature, his dental status, some injuries, fractures, you know, uh, um, all of the information that they can find on the remains. Mm -hmm. Because they will take a DNA sample, send it to a lab, and after when, uh, afterward when the DNA report with a name and a surname of a person will come back, we will start with the process of identification. My name is uh, Merima Ahmetašić and I'm junior astrologist here at the Blood Identification Project. Uh, as soon as the uh, bodies uh, came here, uh, we uh, separate the clothing from the bones and uh, wash them uh, both. Then we will start with the osteological uh, part of this job. So we will do the measurements, uh, we will do the sex and age estimation using, using the all osteological, osteological and anthropological uh, methods. So we have here, um, this is the, like primary examination from the mass grave. We have um, uh, bones from the secondary and tertiary uh, mass graves. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using the DNA uh, testing and the based on the DNA testing we do the reassociation. So uh, reassociation is uh, putting together uh, different uh, so bones from mm -hmm. the different cases. Uh, we cannot do that without the DNA. So based on the DNA uh, we will like have a skull from one case and uh, legs from another case or um, I don't know the maxilla from third case and the base of the DNA uh, we will put all that together and the base of the DNA we will know that that belongs to one person. Mm -hmm. In some cases there are only one, two or three bones that mm -hmm. belongs to one individual but you have to tell to the family this is all we have for right. now. We can't promise you that we will find the rest of it or we will not find it if we will have anything, we will, we're going to let you know. That's, that's all. The other difficulty, technical difficulty, that follows this whole process, this project, uh, are the existence uh, of the siblings. So among 8,000 of missing persons from Srebrenica, uh, there are sometimes the, uh, the whole member, uh, male members from one family that have been missing. So we have missing father, two or three brothers. Uh, so in those situations, if we do have, for instance, two brothers that were like 16 and 19 years old, at, and as a blood donor, we can have only a mother and a sister, then when we isolate the DNA from these uh, from the bodies of the, these two brothers and when we compare it and uh, trying to match it with the DNA blood sample from a mother and a sister we will only know that these two bodies belongs to this family but mm -hmm. the DNA will not distinguish the two of them as actually we're doing the DNA identification and uh, actually combining it with traditional methods which it means that we are actually searching for all of the uh, marks that we can found on the remains which we will later on match with the information that we got from the family members um, we would uh, get the from the family members we will get the information about his high stature while he was alive. Mm -hmm. those are anti-mortem information that we call his dental status some fractures that he had which, which later on can be uh, compared with the with the, the the marks and information that we found on the remains what our anthropologists actually are doing so not only that the DNA will give us the identity of the person, but those informations, this comparison between antemortem and postmortem informations, in many cases can distinguish the two of the brothers. Another thing are the clothing. You can see these paper bags above. In these paper bags, we keep uh, uh, washed and dried clothing that was associated with the human remains. One thing that I have to say is that the clothing is not crucial element for the identification for us. And we usually tell that to the family members, that mm -hmm. it's not crucial element because people in Srebrenica were, they had a big chance to changing clothing among themselves. Mm -hmm. so, so the clothing cannot be your crucial element. But in some situations, as having two missing brothers, since the, the Srebrenica people were surrounded there in a protected enclave for three years, they didn't have chance to buy new clothing. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of handmade repairments into these clothing that can be recognized by their mothers and sisters and wives. So those informations can sometimes help you to distinguish the two of the brothers, for, for instance. On the other side, this clothing has this 
strong social aspect in the whole process because to the family members, the DNA report, it's only a rough document. Mm -hmm. They know what is the DNA analysis. They know how it goes, all of it. But when they see the picture and if they recognize anything, for them, I think it has much stronger background mm -hmm. of the whole process. bodies just arrived from uh, the location and it's going to be uh, actually it's waiting for <coughs> the pathologist to did his primary examination and also waiting for the crime technician um, uh, technicians from the Ministry of Internal Affairs who needs to take the pictures because uh, those pictures will be used uh, on the court and everything in here will be used uh, on the court in the co in the court as an evidences. Coordination Division or ICD um, is responsible for reference collection on the relatives of the missing persons. Um, uh, they take information from uh, relatives of the missing persons and blood archiving, bone archiving and matching the statistical calculation unit. In 2000 they started with organized reference collection from the relatives of the missing persons and uh, from that period till today, we collected over 90,000 reference examples. 90? 90. Wow. From the relatives of the missing person. Mm -hmm. Blood collection department and data entry office. The uh, blood collection team, they're going out from the field, they're taking the reference examples from the relatives of the missing persons. And um, when everything comes here to ICB and blood samples are coded, data entry officer will import all of that stuff, all of that information in our database. So our archive in a hard copy. Everything that is entered in IC and Predator days, we are keeping in a hard copy here. <coughs> this is that blood stained card. As I mentioned to mm -hmm. you, we are taking only four drops of the blood. And uh, this card, they'll get that special barcode number. And uh, in here, they will prepare all of that sample. Actually, what is done with the bone sample is done here in this room. And and uh, all samples are stored in the refrigerators under minus 20 degrees. So we receive that bone sample. And this is how it looked like in origin. Mm -hmm. All of that basic information about one case. And this is clean example, as I mentioned to you. This bones are each bone sample will be assigned by the barcode number. Uh, extracts, if you are able to keep it, that that frozen liquid actually represents human DNA. Wow. Like, uh, as I said, the uh, final step, actually, 
in ICD, Matching and Statistical Calculation Unit. Um, we will actually now uh, try to find a match between like one bone profile uh, against all existing blood profiles in our database. Huh. And as you can see the results, 99 point, a lot of nines. And we are more than sure that we can issue positive DNA report for this missing person. Yay! We do not care if someone, like when we are talking about nationality here in Bosnia and Herzegovina especially, we really do not care who is like Bosnia, who is Croat, who is Serb. It is not important for right. us. What is important is to solve the issue of that missing person, mm -hmm. to find the body of that missing person and to say to the relatives of that miss missing person, okay, this body belongs to that name mm -hmm. and you can bury your I don't know, missing person in proper way and that, that, that's our goal.